To set up the particles for this animation here, I want to take our previous setup and focus on these lines that we just built here. Let's highlight our point display and we can see that these points are distributed kind of irregularly. So let's fix that first by dropping down a resample node, which in this case I'll wire in before the out underscore line so we can take advantage of this. And let's dial back the length to say 0.02 in our case. And also down here, let's treat the polygon as a subdivision curve, smoothing it slightly. So now we have decently resolved lines. Let's set out the particles by maybe using a sphere as a particle. Let this be a primitive that's right. And let's wire this in a mops instancer. Highlight it. And yes, the sphere is a bit big. So let's dial back its scale to 0.01. And also let's set the instancer's distribution not to be distributing on a grid, but on a mesh. And let's just take this mountain node here and drag it into this template object slot here. So now we're scattering our copies, our instances onto this mesh. Let's drag this down here and make sure that we are scattering 2000 copies here, like so. Next, I want to vary those individual copies size a bit, in this case using a noise fall off, which I'll wire in after the instancer. And all I want to do is increase the frequency here so it undulates a bit stronger to 50 along each axis. Next, let's drop down a mops transform modifier, wire this up, and I want to use my fall off that I generated with the noise to just uniformly scale my individual spheres. And let's just for demonstration purpose, scale back the overall sphere here that I'm feeding in and I can see I'm getting this slight variation in size here. So again, uniform sphere scale on the sphere that we're feeding in 0.01 and in the transform modifier, let's set the scale to 0.05. So I just created a bunch of instances of our sphere, slightly different in size. So let's move them along our resampled curves here. And that's the main reason why I'm using mops because there's a really easy to use node in there that makes this task rather straightforward. So under the mops modifiers tab, we have the mops move along spline, which takes in the mops instances here and a spline on the second slot like so. Let's highlight this and immediately you can see we're getting some stuff that we don't want. And that's because the move along spline currently is set up to select the curve by primitive number. So instead let's use the nearest curve and also let's just use distribute as an attach method like so. Now if we toggle real time and hit play, there's nothing happening because this is not animated yet. So let's go to the animate tab. And yes, one thing that we could do is keyframe this goal U here and thus animate all those individual spheres moving there. Or we could just switch the mode to solver and then just hit play and this is moving really fast so let's dial back on the speed here let's use a speed of 0 0.02 and maybe randomize this a bit like so let's reset this play again and maybe still a bit fast so again let's dial this back like so and that is looking nicely. So rather straightforward way to attach and move those individual objects along those splines. Finally, for rendering, if I middle mouse on this, I can see that I've got those instances here now with lots and lots of attributes. And I might want to clean that up before feeding this into a render engine, as it might be a really good idea to render those spheres, not as actual spheres or instances, but purely as particles, which we're going to do in the next video. If you guys like what we're doing and want to support us, you might want to head over to our Patreon. And we'd like to thank all of our patrons, especially Rafik Anadol, Chris Hebert, Important Looking Pirates, Encore VFX, Patrick Fillion, and Gearbox Studio Quebec. Thanks so much, guys.